hot summer day. I gotta tell you about a product. I remember there was a product called Quick Lock. It was something that people would say, oh, it's the stuff that like granules, you put in a wound and unfortunately cause increased heat and possible tissue damage to stop bleeding at sites that you can't control bleeding uh, through with only direct pressure. Or if it was, with, was to be controlled direct pressure, you needed help because they were coagulopathic, they weren't medications, or the wound is that bad. Um, it's hard to tourniquet places like the armpit, the neck, because it's called a, a strangulation move. You try to tourniquet this, or assisting death, or the groin. Right? The groin. Um, so if you can't control bleeding, and even when people are endorsed, oh, the Stop the Bleed box is available. If you've got the most expensive version, you'll have help through uh, a device, a hemostatic uh, dressing that's doused with either some type of clay emollient or some uh, procoagable, um, no, yeah, procoagable uh, uh, factor uh, made out of chitosine, something, uh, an ingredient from shellfish, um, those things. Those things you need to worry about uh, because if you only put gauze and wrap it with a uh, Curlex, that won't be enough. And what they usually have in very good uh, airway uh, stop the bleed hemorrhage control kits is an Israeli bandage. Um, like basically, it looks like an ace bandage, but it has gauze on it so it can soak some of the bleeding. And that you apply tightly after you've applied this hemostatic agent dressing inside the wound and I just met a friend of mine Jared Jared Michaels from um, uh, Jared Michaels and he came up with a product that he's selling and I'm gonna tell you this I haven't gotten any fees for this but a product called wound clot wound clot okay most of you have never heard of this oh it's still uh, we already have this uh, we have uh, or if I don't need it, I'll just douse some gauze in uh, TXA, uh, I have Muracel. I'm going to tell you straight up. This is the only dressing I've ever seen that contributes in becoming part of the clot that stops the bleeding. Regardless what it is. I'll show you links to videos of uh, pigs getting their femoral arteries slashed, punctured with hemorrhage. I'll see videos of a spleen being getting a punctured biopsy, or even the very uh, vascular liver getting uh, punctured, and within either two minutes or within up to nine minutes, with just laying a dressing, an appropriate sized dressing on top of the bleeding wound. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to share your experience that I biased this. I may have uh, enhanced the pro uh, the properties of this device of this product by putting pressure on it. Imagine bleeding from uh, femoral or radial sites for patients who got cardiac cath. They got maybe Plavix or aspirin or heparin. Imagine patients who, who just got dialysis and they get use a lot of heparin in dialysis from the AV fistulas from two sites to uh, take blood out and bring the blood back. Imagine to prevent hemorrhage from those sites. So I'm going to tell you about a case that happened this week. Elderly man bleeding a lot, two of them, uh, two patients. One, EMS, instead of putting direct pressure, put bondages on and just did a tourniquet with the, with tape. And that almost purple, cyanotic, from that, how much pressure it was applied. So that wasn't even, that was a makeshift tourniquet because people were freaking out with how much hemorrhage. And guess what? When I took it off, luckily there was still a thrill. I didn't have to use a stethoscope, I could palpate the thrill. And it most likely it's still functional. Luckily, it was not damaged. A clot didn't form within the device and it didn't get damaged. So it didn't prevent further use of the dialysis port access in the future. The second guy, this is bad. So this patient had a makeshift uh, tied dressing on and that's it. And somehow the patient noted the bleeding despite his stroke like, uh, he had a stroke in the history, a stroke history. And for that, he was on Astrid and Plavix. And despite he has having some hemiparesis, partial hemiparesis in the right arm, he noticed he was bleeding despite this bandage applied by some pre-hospital person. And he put pressure on it. And mind you, he was covered. His white pants, 
his nice shirt was covered in blood. And he had just gotten dialysis. And upon almost arriving home from dialysis, whatever small scab was forming through this very thin skin, because basically a navy fistula is not a natural act of God. It is man-made superficially under the skin. In regards to if there's a graft on it, that whatever scab had formed had fallen off and punctured. Uh, mostly, basically, when I looked underneath, it was a puncture wound where they had put the needles in, and you could see arterial bleeding flying near. Look, we had a sample of this quick clot, and I know I sound like a commercial, but I wanted to see if this really worked. I wanted to be able to provide control and not having to stitch, right? These products, if they become more advanced, why stitch something or damage something if you don't need to puncture someone who's already coagulopathic? Mind you, if this patient was on Coumadin, Eliquis, Zeralto, Pradaxa, or whatever new crazy drug that they used to anticoagulate for AFib, strokes, DVTs, PEs. So, I applied the product, just like they do instructed, right? I had just seen a video of this. So I cut open the package, right? I applied it gently over the wound, let the gauze slightly soak in blood, and guess what? I had a four by four sized gauze. And I applied it, and I bent it, and I folded it, and I put a little bit of gauze of it in case it soaks right through, and I just applied pressure on it. Now, I didn't have never used this product before. So I applied it for not one minute, two minutes, for five minutes. And maybe five minutes is too much. But guess what happens when I, after I applied for five minutes, on the, on the instructions on the back of the package, uh, it actually instructed, after you put pressure on, and I put it gently, I didn't put so hard that I compromised vasculature or flow to the distal hand. The person can still move the hand, and still had a palpable radial pulse, brisk cap reflows. Uh, to remove it, they had recommended perhaps if a gauze uh, was gonna form a clot, I didn't wanna rip the clot off. So I saturated the gauze, um, this specialized in doused gauze, which is just dehydrated uh, cellulose. That's all it is. Cellulose. Um, I didn't want to be. I didn't want to tear it off when I disconnected it. So when I put water on the gauze, it was not to dissolve the clot. It was just to make sure that I didn't tear anything off. And then removing it, a small clot had formed at the site of the puncture wound, and there was no bleeding. Now I doubted myself, and I was like, "Okay, let's go see if bleeding was going to happen in 30 minutes to an hour." So guess what? Now, it was recommended if the bleeding had persisted to reapply another part of the gauze that had not been soaked in blood onto it. The same product. Not to tear another one because I only didn't have one, another one. Another part of this that was dry and apply again. And maybe, add, you know, for my bias, I probably would be freaking out and putting pressure on it. Like, but it wasn't soaking or doused in blood. It was not soaked. The de device enhances the natural properties of the clotting factor of the blood that the patient has. Despite whatever medicines he was on, he was on acid and plastics, and and that part of the dressing became a cl small clot that didn't scrape off, that became inherent in the wound, and the bleeding stopped. This was an arterial-like bleed spurting up in the air when I opened the wound earlier, and now it was not bleeding at all. Imagine that. And I was able to send the patient home with the family, and the patient was, just, in my opinion, able to resume dialysis to the same port because I felt the thrill. He was not exsanguinating. He didn't have a wrist drop. He still had flow and perfusion and nuclear and he was neurovascularly intact distally of the left arm. So this product, I'm sold. It's a great product. Jared Michaels, thank you for introducing this product. <laughs> I am not ashamed. This is better than the quick clot that's in your current eye stop bleeding kits. You probably have to replace it with this. This is a game changer, I'm telling you. You're gonna hear it here. I know my blog is mostly about airways, but it's about resuscitation. And this is a product worth talking about. Airway breathing circulation or circulation airway breathing, CABD. That's the way to think about it. any resuscitation, trauma or non-trauma. Believe it. Again, wound clot. Watch the video if you don't believe me. All right. The story may be epic or not epic to you. Usually you became a game, you, it's a game changer and you become a believer. You become sold when you see it in action. All right? I'm telling you that. Take care. Please come back to another school uh, episode of School of Airway. Bye-bye.